Hey, good morning, Shane. How you doing? Good morning to you, uh, Richard, and the rest of the Orbit 3 team. And uh, thanks for that song. And thanks uh, very much to my uh, three kids. I'm sure they picked it out, uh, Jamie, Matt, and Mari. And uh, good morning to my wife, Kelly. I appreciate it. Great way to start the day. And uh, having said that, we'll take the crowd config if you got it for me. This is Mission Control Houston, the crew on board the Spatial and Space Station Complex uh, preparing for today's spacewalk and the continual retraction of the 2B solar array wing. That is their wing that extends to the starboard side of the P6 uh, truss element on top of the station. That retraction will be uh, worked on by Atlantis Commander Rick Sterko and Mission Specialist Jim Riley. And retract command being sent on my Mark III to one mark. Copy. And abort command sent. Copy. And uh, Houston Atlantis for uh, Solar Ray. Looks like uh, things are folding fairly nominally with the exception of those uh, two short. Uh, leader folds on the FCC strips on the right blanket box. Thank you, JR. And the other uh, item of note is the uh, the leader panel with the spring is still on the uh, outside or the active side of the uh, of the tension bar at this point. It's just kind of waving back and forth on on that side of it. It'll be a little difficult for us to get at it to cut it. Is the is the point? Thanks, JR. We're looking at. It. He's an ISS, uh, retract command sent on my mark. Three, two, one, mark. Copy. Airlock Houston on space to ground two. Uh, we see you reaching the upper limit for oxygen, so we'd like you to doff the masks. You have reached your time. And abort command set. And Houston airlock, that is complete. Thank you, airlock. Copy, JR. ISS Houston for retract. Uh, we think we see some bunching. We're going to put another wiggle in work, so it'll be about 10 minutes if you concur. And we concur. That's in work. ISS Houston for retract. We'd like you to take a good look at the left of blanket box and look for an inverted grommet. It worked. Okay, Houston, in the uh, left blanket box, the inner guide wire there next to the mast, there's uh, three or four grommets that are pointing down toward the uh, box, if that's what you're asking about. And then there's one that points straight like it ought to, straight toward me, and then there's uh, one right above it that's pointing down. Thanks, PJ. We copy. If you're thinking another uh, wiggle test, that's probably a good idea. Uh, we didn't see it happen, but the last time when I called you about, you know, uh, the, the bottom one point down and the one above it pointing up and so forth, we didn't see it clear, but they would definitely clear the first motion of that wiggle test. I understand, CJ. I'm going to put one more wiggle in work. Okay, we're stand by. This is Mission Control Houston with the view on the outside of the International Space Station looking starboard down the truss structure with the space station robotic arm extended out to the left to, to assist with the 2B solar array wing retraction. The 2B array is the one on the left that extends out to the starboard side atop the station on the P6 truss. That uh, wing has been retracted seven and a half of the 31 and a half uh, mast bays, the mast in the center, uh, the structure that uh, retracts or extends the entire solar array wing. The spacewalkers are uh, going through final steps before depressurizing the Quest airlock for the uh, beginning of the spacewalk. 
This is Mission Control Houston with the view of spacewalkers Pat Forrester and Steve Swanson working on the 2B solar array wing that is on the top of the station, the P6 truss. Forrester working at the end of the space station robotic arm, Canada Arm 2, which is being operated by mission specialist Sonny Williams and pilot Lee Archambault. Swanson is uh, working from the base of the solar array wing. This is a view from a video camera on Steve Swanson's spacesuit, looking out uh, towards where Pat Forster is working on the end of the space station robotic arm. Floating into view at the bottom of the screen is Swanson's tool, the hockey shape, uh, so-called hockey stick uh, tool, because of its shape. Go ahead, CJ. Uh, Terry, uh, three out of the four places where there was billowing of the uh, rays as they weren't quite setting down in the block, box the right way have been fixed. And uh, JR is going to say, after we cut that leader, uh, Pat cut that leader, JR is going to send him all the way outboard on the right box to uh, get the last one which needs to be fixed out there where the SEC is not quite right. Okay, and the uh, station folks copy also. Uh, that, that really worked good, just having Swanee do that little bit with the uh, hockey stick really did a lot of good. Now this is the view to remember right here. Yeah, it's amazing, eh? Yeah, say again, Swanee. Just uh, agreeing with Pat, it's a pretty nice view. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's priceless, isn't it? Pat, you're about three quarters away through the maneuver. Okay, Bruce, thanks. This is a view from the helmet cam on Pat Forster's spacesuit looking at Steve Swanson. Motion, keeping it coming, Pat. And Swanee Brew, can you verify we got good clearance off the top of Pat's head? Uh, let me uh, change our position. Hold on. And maybe we get the shuttle guys to verify that. Yeah, we've got a good six feet, bro. Thanks, Pat. Okay, that'll do it right there, I think, bro. The controls, Pat, you're in position to hold. Okay, I just gave it a little tap. It's swinging back out. Jared, we talked about it. Let me ask the ground. Would they like for me to cut it on the uh, F, uh, the uh, Capton portion or on the, the uh, metal? We talked both ways. They've got their choice. And Megan, do you copy? JR on the metal. Okay. On the metal. Hey, good job, Pat. Nicely done, Pat. Go ahead, yeah, CJ. The center guard wires clear the power cable. Yeah, Megan, I don't know if you saw in 20 did those other ones. It better. It's just better to have Pat do this right now and get it all squared away, and uh, we'll be ready to retract very soon here. And CJ, that sounds like a good plan. Good motion, Brew. We're going to go about two more feet. All right, Bonnie, I've got a good position now, so why don't you, if you want to just hold. Okay. I can just hold like this if you want to take it. Yeah. Peace out, Anna, Sarah, to Van Two for Solar Go ahead, CJ. Megan, if it works out with the arm ops and we get Pat out there quick enough, we are going to be looking to get a GoPro retract while it's still daylight here on this 
Steve, we concur with that plan. Motion is stopped. My tether's on it, the bail's locked, yours is coming off. So I'm ready for mine. You ready? Here yep. it comes. Thank you. Okay, Drew, we'll take that up motion now. Coming back up, Pat. And Pat, as we get to very near the top, we're going to be real slow because I noticed that our arm was unfolding uh, quite a bit. Uh, we still had room to uh, go a little higher, but uh, we're going to start to reach our limit is how high we can get you. Copy. Up motion and work. Good motion. Copy, good motion. This is Mission Control Houston, Mission Specialist Pat Forrester riding along on the end of the space station robotic arm being operated by pilot Lee Archambault and Mission Specialist Sonny Williams. Moving him into position to work with one uh, more area on the solar array wing that the crew uh, noticed was not folding correctly. Commander Rick Starko reporting earlier that uh, three of the four areas have been fixed using the uh, tools to help with the panels to fold correctly. and concur with your plan. So the uh, next retrack will be uh, tomorrow after we get done fluffing here. Copy. Okay, Pat and Swanee, here's the big picture plan. Uh, we're going to fluff these as best you can get them and uh, set them up for a retrack tomorrow. And we're going to call it quits on this part of your job for today. Excellent job, and we'll press on to the rest of our SARGE tasks. All right. Copy. This is Mission Control Houston, now two hours and 47 minutes into today's spacewalk. This helmet camera view from the spacesuit of Pat Forrester as he and astronaut Steve Swanson move to the newly installed S4, uh, S3 truss element here to install, install ahead, brace Dan, beams, each of them installing two on the solar alpha rotary joint for this truss. IJR, Bravo 6, counter 2, torque and turns. Uh, no, 
This is Mission Control Houston. We're uh, looking now at a view from the helmet television camera on the spacesuit worn by Pat Forrester. Forrester and uh, Steve uh, Swanson continuing on their spacewalk now uh, four hours and three minutes in duration. Forrester right now working uh, on the uh, Installation of the drive lock assemblies uh, for the uh, newly installed solar array rotary joint on the S4 truss structure. He has a specific sequence of uh, bolts that he has to uh, work with to make sure that they're properly installed. Meanwhile, as these two spacewalkers continue uh, EVA number two of the STS-117 mission, mission managers have uh, completed today's meeting and have made a decision to go ahead uh, with the option that would call for a repair of the uh, solar ray blanket that is damaged on the uh, port or left orbital maneuvering system pod on the third spacewalk coming up on Friday. Five eighths of a turn to the hard stop and remember the thing we were talking about. Yes. On that EVA. Spacewalkers Jim Riley and Danny Olivas will attend to the blanket was seen to be pulled back after launch uh, early on in their spacewalk. Atlantis Houston Big Loop for EVA and the DLA Engage plan. Go ahead, Megan. Okay, uh, what we'd like to do is we'd like to send First of all, the DLA-1 command, which we think will actually engage DLA-2, but we'd like a crew member to be present to verify that DLA-1 does not engage. Following that, we will send the DLA-2 command to engage DLA-1, and we'd like the crew member then to verify that DLA-1 does engage. And at a, uh, on a different EVA, we will go back to verify that DLA-2 is engaged. Copied it all, Jr. Atlantis for EVA, you should uh, see the engage. I see motion. I see a good engage right now. Tell me what you need me to do with my WBS, Jr. Okay, stand by, Pat. I'm going to ship lenses. You want to let them know we see a good engage? Yep, I will. Uh, and uh, Houston Atlantis uh, for DLA. Pat sees a good engage. Great, Pat. Uh, turn to your, uh, move to your right. That's good. Stop right there. Come back just a little bit. Stop. Come back about half an inch to your right. A little more. There you go. Good. Right there. And Houston Atlantis, we can confirm that you have good tooth engagement on uh, DLA-1. This is Mission Control Houston. You can see those teeth of the gears that they're talking about in this view from the helmet camera on Pat Forrester. They're very tiny teeth on that long race ring. Uh, this is uh, the area they're looking at the drive lock assemblies to make sure that they're in the proper configuration before they close the cover. Your go to reinstall the cover. Okay, Pat, we can put the DLA cover back on. Copy. Okay, I can report that the uh, DLA cover's on with four bolts to torque. Okay, and uh, the uh, last note in the procedure here is you could release the cover bolts 1A and B on cover 6 prior to getting out of there. Okay, thanks, Daryl. I'm already kind of set up. And... Uh, I will recover my tethers. 
Atlantis Houston for EVA with a clarification. Go ahead, Megan. And JR, this may already be clear to you, but uh, since we only have one of the DLAs, um, we, we need you to leave one of the launch restraints alone without breaking torque, either launch restraint two or launch restraint five. And copy that, Megan. This is Mission Control Houston, Spacewalkers Steve Swanson first, and then uh, Pat Forrester re-entering the Quest airlock crew lock as they uh, get ready to end their spacewalk. Now six hours and 55 minutes in duration so far as the shuttle station complex orbits 215 miles over the southern Indian Ocean uh, just off the uh, southern coast of Australia.
And today was our second EVA. And you can see here's patent 20 in the airlock as part of their, their oxygen pre breach protocol. We spent the night in that airlock, and uh, this is us getting them out first thing in the morning, getting ready for the, uh, to putting them in the suits. Uh, prior to getting into the suits, we need to depress the airlock down to 10.2 PSI. And uh, this is uh, part of the procedure where we're closing the, uh, the hatch into the, uh, the equipment lock. And uh, early this morning, we started, while those guys were getting ready to do their EVA, we did the initial uh, retracts on the solar array, which actually went a lot better than we anticipated today. And uh, we were able to get about five days in before these guys even went outside. And here you see the array itself. And uh, as you can see, it looks like it's uh, in pretty good shape overall, but it doesn't seem to be any backfolding anywhere. And, and uh, everything was coming in pretty, uh, pretty normally. team effort to do that. CJ was watching uh, as the retract was coming in and I was executing the commands as, uh, for, on the PCS and backed up by Brew on, in, uh, in the lab. Meanwhile, these guys are getting uh, suited up and uh, getting their safers on and ready to go out the door. There's 20 right there. There I am. Uh, the SAFER is something that uh, is used for an emergency uh, aid rescue in case an uh, EVA crew member uh, might come uh, off of structure without a tether. And so uh, they're installed, and that's Sunny installing it right there. Okay, this morning, uh, Oleg Kotov and myself got the uh, robotic arm in position for, uh, so it would be right, uh, ready for Pat uh, Forrester when he got out on the, uh, on the EVA this morning. suited up and uh, Sonny and, uh, is helping put us in the airlock and Danny, uh, that's uh, 20 that they're putting in there right now. Once we're in there, they'll close the hatch and depress it and it'll be time to go to work. While we were doing that, uh, Drew Archambault was uh, moving the uh, space station robotic arm into a position that I could then... Uh, do some final commands to uh, have the opportunity to install an APFR, a foot restraint, where a crew member stands, and then I would climb into that foot restraint. So the time arrived, and it was uh, just getting dark as we were coming out of the hatch. Uh, that's me coming out first. I'll come out and set up a few tethers and receive some tools from Steve Swanson, and then he'll come out right after me. And then uh, while these guys are outside, I was doing the IV task, uh, repeating the job that Pat did for us on EVA-1 uh, from the inside, and a couple of tools that we have in the background of video, and of course a few of them directly. The other uh, things that we had going are the wireless video systems on top of the helmets, which gives us a great uh, eye in the sky view of uh, what these guys are doing.
And they kind of, we were all very happy at that moment. One problem solved. A few more to come. Well, we had a great view out the uh, PLT windows. Uh, we were clearing the arm for uh, Blue and Oleg while they were flying pat around up there. And so, actually, Sonny was up and uh, assist uh, And great arm flying by uh, Blue and Sonny today. Now you can see uh, Swanee still hanging out there on the uh, mass canister and also giving good clearance calls. Thank you. 